Hey there, interwebs, and welcome back to Who? Fascinating. A sub-series of How Fascinating, wherein we examine semi-famous but quite misunderstood historical figures of interest. Now, I'm going to assume you've heard of Mary Magdalene, the original hooker with a heart of gold who literally embraced Jesus and turned her life around. Regulars to this channel know what I'm about to say next. That's not actually true. Obviously, I could go full atheist mode and say that the Bible is, at best, a work of historical fiction and that all of the events or characters in it were made up, but that's not interesting and this is a series dedicated to the fascinating. For the purposes of this video, let's just take it as read that Mary Magdalene was a real-life historical figure, albeit a tad zhuzhed up to make for a better story. Even if that's the case, she still wasn't a prostitute. The earliest references we have to Old Maggie are the three synoptic gospels of Matt, Mark, and Luke, all written in the first century AD. For contrast, the first mention of Mary the prostitute comes from a sermon given by Pope Gregory I in the late 6th century. And it's not even the same Bloody Mary. And now I want a Bloody Mary. Damn you, Gregory the Great! As I was saying, Double G seems to have gotten some chocolate in his peanut butter and conflated Double M with Mary of Bethany, a distinctly different character. Look, there's a whole mess of women named Mary in the New Testament. Wikipedia's even got a separate page to address the confusion. Anyway, while he was getting his Marys crossed, Pope Greg also included the unnamed sinful woman of Luke 736 through 50. What's more, Jane Doe here wasn't originally identified as a prostitute either. In Jewish society at the time the Gospel of Luke was written, sinful would have simply meant that she didn't rigorously follow Mosaic law. It wasn't until Greg's 591 Easter sermons that her sins were specifically claimed to be ones of a sexual nature. So that's that. Mary Mags wasn't a whore, but was she, wait for it, a werewolf? Probably not, considering that werewolves are about as fictional as people returning to the dead after a few days in a cave, but again, let's ignore that for now. Admittedly, I do like to make crazy theories combining historical figures with mythological creatures, but just look at all this early medieval imagery we have of her. She's covered in fur. We don't actually know for certain why the artist depicted her this way, but there are a few accepted theories about Harry Mary here. 1. They felt it was necessary to depict her as naked so people would recognize her as a prostitute, even though she wasn't, but they also felt they had to keep her covered up for modesty. They gave her what TV tropes refers to as Godiva hair, and as time went on it got a little out of hand. 2. The artists wanted to depict her as sexually wanton or promiscuous, like some first century girl gone wild, and it was a trend at the time to show wild men of nature as being covered in fur, halfway between man and beast. The au naturel fursuit would have therefore linked her to nature, and by extension, amorality, paganism, and the devil. So remember, kids, heathens have all the fun. Those are the two most commonly held beliefs, but I have a third and final one of my own. And when I say of my own, I mean it. I came up with it independently, and I haven't seen anyone else specifically arguing in favor or against it. I think it could have been a medieval bilingual pun. You see, one of the Latin words for prostitute was lupa. If that sounds like the word lupine, meaning wolf-like, that's because they share the same root. Lupa literally means she-wolf. A Roman brothel was called a lupinar, which means wolf den or place of the she-wolf. You may also remember that Romulus and Remus were, according to legend, raised by a she-wolf, and if we take a euhemeristic approach to the myth, it may have its origins in twin boys raised by a prostitute. Your word of the day is euhemerism. Speaking of linguistics, euhemerism, and biblical characters, there's also the belief that Jesus' virgin birth originally simply meant born to a young woman. Even today, the word for virgin in many languages simply translates to young woman. Take, for example, the German word Jungfrau. It wasn't until the late medieval era or early modern period that Bibles were commonly printed in the vernacular. Prior to that, they were written in Latin, and Latin was the language of the church. If you said Maria autum era lupa, you might mean to say Mary was a whore, but you'd literally be saying Mary was a she-wolf, and I bet she gives it like one either way. Or not. Regardless of what you choose to believe, thanks for watching, and have a fascinating day.